Hello, hello, hello. So good to be with you today. I realized that this marks about a month of doing these uh, recorded classes, these virtual, not quite in-person classes, but I'm glad that we can get as close as we can. Um, I'm having fun hearing from you and even having fun imagining where you might be doing yoga with me today. Are you looking at it on a little phone? Are you out on your lawn or a deck? Um, are you on a big screen TV? You know, what's, what you got going on? So it's kind of fun for me to picture what's happening in your life and how you're making this be a part of it. Um, I wanted to just revisit a couple little props that I've got. Um, we're doing a, a great practice today. I've been thinking about us gardening and kind of getting out and doing yard work and um, hopefully walking and hiking, do all, doing all kinds of stuff. Um, I know a lot of people are decluttering, but so I'm intentionally trying to bring us a practice that'll kind of massage our body. I think of yoga as a massage that we give ourselves. And so the idea is it'll help us get into kind of wrists and ankles and shoulders and hips and the whole everything. Um, because most of what we do really does require repetitive stress on certain parts of the body and then requires overall health and fluidity from the whole body in order to do what we want to do well and then also feel good afterwards and not like we got run over by a train. So I've got a few objects today that um, I want to remind you are, are helpful always to have around but I'm specifically going to be asking you to use today. Um, one is a strap and this is a classic yoga strap but you could use a, a belt um, as long as it's long enough. You don't want something stretchy, so you don't want to use a TheraBand for this. Um, I'm currently wearing a scarf because my neck was a little chilly, um, but I have found these actually when they come off to be a really great makeup strap um, because it's again a nice length and it doesn't stretch, so I can use that. Um, having a block handy um, will be good for laying over, or um, I often will take something like this, just a, a throw, or a towel and I try to roll it, fold it and roll it so it's not wider than my body so that when we lay over it um, and we have this roll or the block, one or the other, under kind of the bra strap area that it's not too high, that it's not creating neck pressure or pulling on my lower back. Um, so I'll show you today with um, using this with my body. Other times you might use the block under the bra strap and the towel or something under your head to just make sure the head's not dipping back. In all of our practice, we want that extension through the neck. We never want a collapse. So in the recent weeks, as I've been guiding you in dog series and sun salutations, I've made a point of telling you to just really elongate the neck um, and to not do the classic reach that people do. And there's nothing wrong, to be clear, with reaching through the chin and getting that wonderful stretch through the chest. It's just that most people, when they are trying to imitate what they see in, say, dog series and, you know, Cobra and Up Dog and all that, most people are tending to kind of collapse the head back and that you're really decompressing the spine there. Um, I also think if you're doing a lot of these in a row, it's kind of stressful to keep reaching. But you know, one or two or three can be wonderfully therapeutic to open up this front of the body. But again, it's always a root and a reach and not a kind of a collapse. So um, I just wanted to mention that because we I'm gonna throw in a round of sun salutation today um, and let you kind of get back into that flow gently. Like I said, just one round. We've been doing a breakdown in recent weeks. So if you're uh, feeling lost, go back and check that stuff out. Um, let's see, I've also got my bolster, which would be lovely potentially for sitting on. Um, we are going to do a Kapalabhati breath, which can be done seated or standing if you prefer. And again, you can always sit on something that you've got handy that's comfortable. Um, I think that's kind of it for props, glass of water. Um, and I wanted to, I guess, just ask you in the last month or so, um, what are you noticing? about your body's patterns and habits. Um, I really started off talking about uh, restoring neutral in our spine, in our shoulder girdle, in our hip girdle, um, and trying to refine what is sort of our natural design mechanically 
um, and again, we're all built differently, but there's basic principles, uh, like having the shoulders um, in alignment with the hip bones and not forward of them or backward of them, having the head in alignment with that and not forward or back and so on. Um, also restoring alignment with the, the feet in neutral. So again, you know, as we've lived our lives, many of us have experienced things that have created not neutral mechanically, again, repetitive stress or injury. And one of our great gifts in yoga is to get to notice what those imbalances are and then to also try and create balance. So again, I've been kind of focusing on that in recent weeks. It's always a part of our practice. Um, but I want to return your focus to it again today and just invite you to reflect if you've noticed or discovered anything. Um, we'll be doing train tracks again today, for example. I'd be curious, has that changed for you from when you started doing it? Or have you noticed any particular pattern, like that one hip is rotated, it'll show up in the foot, but that it's probably coming from the hip and pelvis? Um, so in other words, what do you know? What have you learned and perhaps what's changed or evolved? And I'm hoping some things have. So um, let's see here. Yeah, I think that's what I wanted to go over with you um, in what we kind of call our Dharma talk, um, a conversation about our practice and also uh, kind of the, the mindset of yoga. So a reminder as we are approaching the stuff in our body, uh, even something extreme as injury or illness, um, it becomes really important to notice what is our uh, spiritual and mental mm, attitude, our stance, if you will. So in other words, if I come across a part of my body that is not neutral and I'm experiencing pain or stress, and again, maybe I actually have a, a illness or an injury that's acute right now, what is my internal response to that? Am I angry at that part of my body? Do I feel grief? Um, am I uh, kind of perfectionistic or judgmental? And what we would say is that the mat is a great place to get intimate and enough with our thoughts to notice and know these things. And then once we're off the mat in daily life, we'd love to notice where we repeat those same patterns. and both on and off the mat are wonderful places to transform that relationship with self um, and to heal it and ultimately to create more wholeness, which is our yoga practice. It's the, the practice of bringing together body, mind, and spirit and uniting them in a whole, um, not subjugating one part of us to be over there and uh, not participate. And so this is a great place to notice what's currently happening in your body, mind, and spirit, and to work with that gently and kindly and compassionately. So we're going to start on our back bodies, reclined over either uh, the rolled up blanket, towel, etc., or the block. And if you have the block that you're using, you really want to be careful that that upper edge of the block is down below the wingtips of the shoulder blades, not on or under them. So I'm going to lay my object down and recline onto my forearms and then recline over the object. And if in doing so, um, it's again too high or too low, I'll adjust. I'm noticing I'm a little higher up the object than I want to be. So I'm going to scooch down. And I like to say that we are seeking the ah. So there should be a feeling of like, oh yeah, this feels good, like a good massage. Um, and that you're not having to kind of survive it in any way. <laughs> when I have people and I check in and I say, how is that? And they're like, it's okay. I'm like, well, it's okay. It's not, ah. Uh, so please keep adjusting until you find your, ah. Uh, and then rotate the palms open perhaps, inviting that external rotation of those shoulder heads. Letting the feet be a little wider than the hips is again a nice way to kind of undo some of our daily life patterns. And now as you're ready, please come into your three points of introversion. Closing the eyes, turn the gaze up and in as if looking behind the center of the forehead. Lightly connect the end of the tongue at the roof of the mouth behind the front teeth. 
and check that the rest of the tongue is soft, non-striving. They've actually done studies uh, that have shown that it's impossible to maintain a high level of anger, for example, with the tongue relaxed. So we know that the tongue being like compressed or sandwiched up against the roof of the mouth allows a certain kind of maintenance of tension, of engagement, um, and usually kind of a stressful uh, engagement, not just good strength. So we'd love to find that softness in all of the tongue, jaw, and throat, just the light connection of the tip of the tongue. And you might even add a soft smile around that. Finding your soft ujjayi breath with the throat lightly contracted. Noticing the breath movement in the body. Where do you feel it touching you? Where do you feel fabric moving against your skin? And one of the gifts of this shape is the opportunity to really feel breath massage into the, the sternum, clavicle, uh, the side of the, the ribs, places that can get really compressed if we're kind of walking around with a slouch or we're sitting a lot at a computer or watching television and that sort of thing. So feel free to stay as long as you like in this basic pose to really get intimate with your breath. When you are ready to join me in movement, gather that right arm straight up to the sky, activate through the fingers, and then slowly reach that right arm overhead towards the wall behind you. And then invitation to sweep the arm right and left. And what you might feel is a kind of a massage and movement around the shoulder blade. Pause at any point and gather a deep inhale to notice where it massages you. And when you feel complete, bringing that arm to neutral and exploring the other side. Inhaling left arm up and over, reaching firmly through the middle finger and actually all the fingers, but I usually send my main attention to the middle finger and then pulsing the arm up and down and in and out and just seeing what's there. Is this shoulder different? Find your place of best stretch and gather a full breath. And when you're ready, returning to your neutral with the arms, and then we'll come off the object of support by rolling a little to one side. I never want to lift my head directly up off the floor because that's going to create a lot of tension in the front of the neck where we tend to carry a lot of it anyway. So please return to your back body. And we're going to come right into our compression and expansion. So I feel like this is our no, number one kind of accessible way to restore full neutral breath, but it's a very active process. Gathering a long inhale, big Buddha belly. Exhale, compressing the abdominal wall towards the spine, anchoring the floor toward, wall <laughs> belly towards the floor. <sighs> emptying, 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 asking is there more? When there is not, inhale, soften, allow. Big inhale, rising up the spine, regaining that spinal curve, expanding it a little extra at the end. And again, exhaling compression, powerful engagement downward through the belly, which will tilt the pelvis upward. And some of us will tighten the neck naturally. We don't want to. So if that's kind of your habit, Always just practice rolling the head side to side to invite softening in that neck occipital ridge area. On the inhale, soften, allow yourself to be breathed. 
expand it. Maybe you can get an extra little breath stretch somewhere new into the ribs and chest. And again, so continuing please to your breath flow. We'll do this for a few more rounds. Exhaling compression. I sometimes will poke at my abdominal muscles to try and wake up some that might be sleepy. Maybe those low abdominal muscles between the hip bones. And if your mind wanders off, just bring it back, asking of the breath, is there more? Is there more? It's a great way of keeping your mind present with the breath flow throughout our whole practice, whether you're in a kind of re reclined pose like this or our more active postures and flow. A couple more. And if you'd like to turn these last couple rounds into a rock pose, go ahead and tighten all the muscles of the body on that exhale. So hands into fists, arms, butt cheeks, thighs, scrunch the face. You can always turn it into a sit-up if you'd like. But a nice way to wake up the muscles and get them to then also release. Last one, big inhale. You might even sweep arms overhead and stretch, stretch, stretch. Exhale, compression, rock pose, shoulder heads activating down the back, maybe a sit up. And release, big inhale. Again, reach arms overhead towards the wall behind you and just take a moment here to get really organic, rolling the wrists, the ankles, flexing and pointing the wrists and the ankles. And then we'll gather the right knee into the belly for release wind pose. So both feet flexed firmly. Shoulder heads activated down the back. And you're going to want your strap um, or scarf or whatever within reach for what we're going to be doing in a moment. But I'll just mention, for those of you who have a hard time reaching the knee, maybe it's here and you're having to shrug in order to reach it, instead take your strap around the knee and be able to draw that knee in however far it's gonna come while keeping the shoulder heads rooted instead of reaching away. And that's a really nice amendment. Good, big breath into the belly, letting it touch the thigh, hopefully, and on the exhale, bringing the thigh towards the belly. Let's do one more like that. Really anchoring down also through that floor thigh bone of the left leg creates a wonderful counter stretch through the hip flexor. And then we're going to switch, bringing the left knee in, release wind pose, both feet flexed, shoulder heads anchored. And again, noticing is this side different? Does having one knee in, you know, roll you a little out to the side or do you feel completely neutral? This is part of that clue trail, as I call it, that we like to gather. Continuing with deep abdominal breath, belly moving towards the thigh, and on the exhale, thigh moving towards the belly. This is massaging, actually, our internal organs, helping restore neutral there, too. We've got our ascending colon on the right and descending colon on the left. And we're going to switch one more time, bring the right knee in, and now I'd like you to grab your strap or scarf or whatever you want to be using. And I'm going to have you take it and put it over the arch of that right foot. And I've got my hands, uh, one on each end of the strap, and I'm taking them as high up as I can towards the foot without, again, reaching the shoulder heads off the floor. So shoulder heads anchor down the body towards the floor. And I want to then check in here does it feel good to have the leg completely extended in a, a totally straight knee? If so, it's great because you've got enough room to just let that happen with the strap. The other leg, by the way, is engaged down and flexed through the foot. But also check, would it feel good to bend your right knee a little bit, grab a little higher on the strap, and apply a little pressure with the hands? So, you know, maybe both of them feel good. What we're really looking for is a stretch into the belly of the hamstring muscles. So that's the 
kind of center. We don't want to feel it behind the knee and we don't want to feel it right at the insertion point up by the glute. So play a moment please with bending, straightening, applying a little pressure and noticing where you get a good stretch. You can also do a little resistance. So if I use my right foot or leg and I kind of push onto the strap and then relax into the stretch and push and relax, sometimes that'll get me into a nice place too. So we're gonna hold here for a few breaths. Again, shoulder heads anchoring, that floor leg active. Deep inhale, deep belly breath. Exhale, drawing that right leg towards you, just with the perfect amount of pressure so that it's an ah, so that it's a good welcome massage. And then as you're ready, I want you to just start moving a little right and left. And this gets us into the outside of the thigh, which is that IT band area connecting the knee and hip. And some of us that'll feel really intense, others not so much, but this is a great place to notice, in fact. I'm going to bring us out of our straight leg for a moment, and I'm going to have you take your hand around both ends of the strap, your right hand, or if at some point it's better for you to grab your actual foot, you can do that. And we're going to take the left arm out into a, a kind of a T, and I'm going to just draw that right knee down, and I'm trying to bring it outside of my right rib cage so that it's coming towards the floor. Kind of like happy, ba happy baby, but a half of a happy baby. <laughs> so extend your left leg firmly. Again, I've got my left thigh anchoring down so firmly that it brings my left heel up off the floor. So that's kind of what we're looking for. So I'm gonna ask you again, holding, powering down through that right leg. And then again, just sort of moving a little left and right. Make sure you're anchoring down through that left hip bone. We don't want the left butt or hip rolling away from the floor. Now, you've got a choice here. Um, those of you who find spinal twist kind of intense anyway, you may want to just come directly from here into spinal twist with that right knee bent. Otherwise, an option here is to return that right leg straight, take the left hand only on the straps, right arm is extended out, and then with that left leg very, leg very active, you're gonna slowly rotate towards the floor and to your left. We might find a place part way like I am here where I'm like, holy moly, that is a great stretch. More so, by the way, if I'm really rooting and reaching through both feet. If I let that right leg get kind of floppy, I'm not gonna feel stable and I'm also not gonna get as good of a stretch. If it feels safe to do so, slowly let that leg come down to the floor, even though it means, in my case, my right shoulder's off the floor. It's actually a great stretch for the chest. And then please explore, again, rooting and reaching through both legs, and now through your right arm. Breathing into that shape. Can you apply a little more pressure by holding a little higher with your left hand on the strap or by pulling, kind of bending the elbow. Find that just right stretch, keep pressing through the right heel. And I'm gonna come back to center by bending that leg again. This is the safer thing to do for the low back, for sure. Come back to center. Once again, now taking the strap or scarf in your right hand, kind of straightening the leg, left arm is out, and Again, I want to be active through the floor leg. I want to really power down through my core, kind of like I do during compression or rock pose, so that as I take my right leg out to the right now, kind of in a half straddle, and I'm getting a good stretch without letting that left side of the body peel away from the floor. I want it to anchor powerfully. And again, notice what's happening in your right arm. If you're holding too close to your chest, you know, you might have a, a wrist or something that's kind of crimped. I really want a state of ease in that right arm with the shoulder head anchored. So here I am, hopefully in power and peace, deep breath. And you could take that left arm up at a little bit of an angle or whatever feels good. Rooting, reaching, breathing, soft neck, maybe smiling. <sighs> and power through the core come on back to center one more option here with the strap or again you can take your hand directly to the foot if you're able to reach it 
So one option is to just now bring my foot towards my abdomen or towards that left hip. It's kind of a reclined pigeon, right? So you might be quite at a high angle um, or maybe it's far away from you. And that's why the strap is so great because it lets you get that stretch without having to shrug and do weird stuff. If you've got the flexibility and you just want to grab that foot directly and kind of hold onto the knee and bring it in, you can do that too. And either way, inviting you to kind of move a little right and left and just getting that wonderful hip stretch. If it feels okay to do so in your body, you might just let the right foot come down onto the left thigh and let that right knee settle towards the floor. I don't mean that it'll touch the floor, just that you're allowing it to go that direction. If you feel any kind of sciatic pinch or anything in any of these positions, back off of that angle. That is not a good stretch. That's a nerve being irritated in your body. And when you're ready, release the strap and relax into your corpse pose and simply breathe. Notice the two sides. <sighs> Sighing breaths are always a wonderful way to come present, to reset. They always say that I am well, I am whole, I am safe, again, non-striving. All right, we're gonna take a hold of that left arch now with the strap. And I'm gonna have my both hands on the strap, shoulder heads anchored, right leg activated deeply, and exploring right here again, bending and straightening. So is it better for your leg to be fully straight, a little bent? If you're fully straight, by the way, make sure that it's not locked. And you're really thinking about engaging your thigh, your quadricep muscle, in towards the bone. That's part of what protects and strengthens uh, your whole knee joint. And um, it's not just having your leg in this position, it's actually contracting the right supporting muscles. So when you're ready with either straight or a little bit bent, feel that hamstring stretch and begin pulsing a little bit towards you in a way, and then when you're ready, a little left and right. So we're gonna be here for a few breaths, go to where it feels most delicious to you. And this is your massage. I'm just here helping guide the process. And it's so wonderful in this kind of practice too to notice what does feel really good to your body because you know maybe you'll want to do that again or maybe you know tomorrow or maybe even later today you'll be like oh yeah i want to just do that one stretch one more time that felt really great it's really been fun for me to hear how many uh, yogis are sharing this practice with their partners or family grandchildren loved ones um, that just makes it all worth it, I gotta say. So, um, you know, I love a lot of these poses are very easy to share, even if somebody doesn't want to do a whole practice, right? Okay, we're gonna take a hold of that strap now in the right hand only. And, oh, sorry, no, left hand only. I wanna bring it down by the ribs. So right arm extended out, bringing the left knee firmly down towards the floor. And again, if it's better for you to just grab the foot itself, you can do that. You can also grab the big toe um, by taking your middle and index finger between the big and second toe and then gripping the big toe. That's a, a really nice way to grip that's actually a little easier on the forearm muscles. If you're already feeling strain in your forearms these days, we want to protect them. Um, but I know they're doing some good work here with the strap. All right, and now when you're ready, we're going to Take it across, and you're gonna to get to choose again. Do you wanna keep it bent to head into that spinal twist, or do you wanna take it into a straight leg? And um, I'm contending with a piece of furniture here, obviously. I don't wanna to move too much because I don't wanna end up off your screen. Although I think, there we go, there's a little more. And um, so first start with the leg not quite on the floor, okay? So this is a, it's a good to start part way and feel that stretch. You might want to intensify it by grabbing your hand higher up the strap or just by you know, bending that right arm and kind of pulling on it. And if that feels good and you want to take the leg straight into spinal twists that way, go for it. Otherwise, please bend it and come on into your, your twist. 
And a reminder that we still want to be activated through the floor leg, the right leg in this case, and that the arm should be wherever feels great, really exploring root and reach through your body. And in fact, this alignment that we're getting right here is very similar to something we're going to be doing standing later. So find how long you can get. You reach all the way over your head. And when you are ready to come back, bend the knee, return, bring the right arm out again for support or anchoring. Power down firmly through that right side of the body. So you've got that right butt cheek and thigh all anchored and shoulder heads anchored slowly out to the left with that left leg applying the just right amount of pressure with the arm so that you're feeling a good stretch but there's nothing kind of going into protection right you don't want to feel the pull behind the knee or the base of the butt just all right in that meat of the hamstring and checking in that you're using your quadricep muscles on the front of the thigh to push towards the thigh bone big breath rooting reaching and when you're ready, come on back to center. And this is, again, that kind of reclined pigeon. Now, if this is, just doesn't work for you and you want to do our more basic reclined pigeon that we do all the time, go for it, right? This is what I mean about editing out your practice, that I'm just providing a framework. Your body knows if it's got deep affection for certain things. So always feel free to try what I'm doing, but then go where you need to go. So again, I can use that strap to try and bring the left foot towards my, my belly, my right hip bone, kind of anywhere from the center line to the right, and I can even make those movements, or I can just grab the foot itself. And again, kind of an add-on here that I didn't show on the other side, but I did in a recent practice, is you can even add a little sit-up to that and hug that knee tightly if you're that close to the leg. All right, and Sometimes it feels important to kind of straighten it again, but then ultimately see if you can just lay that foot onto the thigh and let that left knee settle. Does this feel different on this side? Breathing. And eventually letting that go. <sighs> Good, let's come into abdominal Pumping, gather a long inhale, slow, deep, and wide. Exhale, empty the breath and hold out. Draw the belly in and then press out, in and out. This is all without breathing until you need to. <sighs> Good, let's do one more like that. And you can slow <clears throat> and speed the, the pumping, just whatever feels most natural to you or what feels just like you're getting, kind of getting in there, but in a loving way. Big inhale, exhale, empty and hold out, begin pumping. feels really good after that to just bring knees to belly, a little spinal rocking if you'd like, and our beloved bridge pose. One of the most important poses for restoring neutral and balance as far as I'm concerned. Big inhale, slow, deep, and wide. Exhaling, press up. And you can, you know, come in and out, pulse a little bit, whatever you need to do. When you're ready, please work your shoulder heads underneath you towards each other so you're creating that shoulder blade sandwich as i call it and again you might pulse in and out a little bit when you're ready hands on hip bones hold at your upper end and we're going to come into our leg extensions um, if your back is a little sore you haven't done this in a while just lift one foot at a time what i call kind of a foot hover and then if that feels good and you're ready to intensify straighten through one heel at a time Holding long enough to notice, is your hip dropping? Can you restabilize it? Are you breathing? And try not to use your neck, so invite that area to be soft. Big breaths, noticing. And I said that the bridge pose, in my opinion, is one of the most important. 
come on down when you're ready. It was great to have validated by a physical therapist not that long ago that <clears throat> if he could only advise or recommend one posture to basically all humans that they should do every day, it was bridge with leg extensions. So um, especially for you know gardening and heavy lifting and all the stuff that we do that tends to really put stress through this pelvic girdle, that is a wonderful way to reignite. In fact, let's do one more round. <laughs> reignite the communication, the nerve and muscle firing back there of all these muscles that actually are a huge part of our power, but that get kind of over like stretched just by sitting in that kind of elongated position. They lose their power to shorten and to stabilize. You know, we tend to think that we always want all our muscles long and actually a big part of how they do their job is their ability to shorten well and to stabilize and protect us, especially when it comes to the low back. All right, notice if anything has shifted, if you're more stable, more even than when we started. I hope so. And come on down. All right, we're gonna do one more arm position here, and I'm gonna keep my feet flat because it just feels nice on my low back. You could lay flat if you wanted to. We're gonna do um, goal posts. Um, and Essentially, you know, that's where our arms are in the shape of goalposts. The elbow is straight out from the shoulder and the hand straight up from there. But first, I'm going to have you do it with the fingers towards the ceiling. And, you know, just peek if you're not sure. You don't want your elbows down by your ribs. You want them kind of straight out. Shoulder heads engage down towards the floor. Big inhale. Exhale, power down through your back, just like you did in compression. And then briefly apply vigorous pressure to the floor with your upper arms. And then release, good, big inhale. Exhale, belly to spine, spine to floor, power down through those upper arms, neck remaining soft. Good, and if you wanna try an additional position, it's with the goal post with the forearms flat on the floor. If that creates any shoulder stress, then don't do it. Return to where we were, um, or you go part way if you want to. But when you're ready, one more time, actually let's do twice more, big inhales, exhale, anchor through the pelvis and spine. So you've got a nice little bit of glute contraction and belly and apply pressure through the arm. And what I'm hoping you're feeling is some contraction between the shoulder blades. We really want to wake up those muscles. Again, they often are tight, but in a way that actually isn't the good tight. One more time. And relax, release, bring those arms overhead and briefly reach and take one hand around one wrist and then the other. Might feel good to extend the legs again as you do this. And just notice if your shoulders are different from one another at all. Um, for most of us, they, they often are. Oh, so we're gonna come into a, a seated shoulder stretch as well. Um, I call it crab pose, or you can think of it as reverse table. But we're going to be um, having our fingertips facing towards the heels. Now, if you've got uh, a wrist that's really sensitive or something, and this just does not feel good, you could do this in fists as well. However, the activation with the hands that I'm going to be asking you to do um, won't be quite the same. So we're not holding very long. It's literally like up for a breath and back down. But your hands are positioned like so, fingertips towards the butt. But once our butt is off the floor in our table pose, like so, I want you to be picturing that you're trying to rotate the hands out. Don't move the hands. It's just a muscular engagement, as if you were trying to smush or smear something with your hand. But again, the hand actually doesn't move. And I think you'll feel pretty quickly what I mean. So when you're ready, place those fingertips towards the butt, palms on the floor. Shoulder heads activate down the back. And I want a nice peaceful neck here. Once we're up, if you want to kind of reach the chin up in that stretch that I was talking about through the, the neck, you're welcome to do that. Big inhale. Exhale, press the hips up. And when you're ready, engage your arms as if you wanted to rotate your hands outward. If you want to reach up through the chin, go for it and down. And I'll just do two more of those. Big inhale. Exhale, rise. Engage with those arms to rotate, theoretically, the hands. And release. 
Let's do one more. Rise the butt. Rotate in your mind the hands. Reach up through the chin. And release. Good. And I like just rotating through the wrists and so on and kind of loving it up. All right. So we're going to come up to standing. And let's see. Yeah. Let's grab the strap, if you would. Again, it can be your strap or your scarf, whatever you're using. <clears throat> and we're going to go sideways on the mat in straddle. And I want uh, to point out, if you're using a strap with the metal buckle, uh, you always want to make sure that you are have one hand towards that buckle so it's not flying around in space and hitting you. Um, we're going to start with the strap, the hands on the strap, pretty wide. And if you want to shorten it up a little bit, you can afterwards. But I want to just start wide so we know that we're, we're doing good alignment. And the alignment I'm looking for is, first of all, a nice kind of athletic straddle. You're pushing into the earth. Um, my wrists are not cocked. I don't want them to have a crease in the wrist there. I should be able to see a nice straight line down the forearm to the middle knuckle there, not, not uh, rotated. And I'm going to simply take, pushing through my knuckles, take my arms up. And I want you to pause and notice if you can have your shoulder heads anchored down here. If you can't and you're kind of shrugged, you absolutely want to widen the hands on the strap some more. Okay? So just pause here and push down into the earth, reach up through the hands, anchor the shoulders, and breathe. Good. Now slowly, I'm going to rotate so you can see me, slowly begin to let those hands come back, but you still want to be pushing towards the sky. So both elbows are straight, and this is where you need to check yourself. People have a habit, I've noticed, of kind of cheating and bending one elbow or another in order to get the strap behind them. Instead, I'd rather have us keep the arms vigorously straight, but to just let the hands slide farther apart on the strap in order to continue to come back and come back and down and back and down with the arms straight, okay? Again, we've all got our own history. If you've got <clears throat> a shoulder or an arm that is just not appreciating this, uh, adjust it until it's happy or don't do it is my advice, all right? Again, we'll be doing lots of things and um, we should never expect that they all will work for everyone's body. So coming again into that starting pose, hands fairly wide on the strap, coming forward, activating the shoulder heads down, pause upright, get as wide as you think you need to. You can start shorter if you want to, but then please on your slow journey back, keep pausing to notice, do I need to widen? Do I need to widen? And you'll see that I am doing that. You may not be able to see it actually a lot on that on the video, but I am consistently letting the strap get longer between my hands so that I can stay in just a good stretch but not having to cheat and bend the elbows or crank on something. <clears throat> so let's do that one more time and noticing what it's like in your body, making adjustments, and please bring really good breath to it. When you're ready, inhaling, begin. Reaching forward and up and pause activating shoulder heads down and then beginning that slow journey and again i'm gradually widening my strap so i'm not bending my elbows i'm pushing from my feet out through my wrists through my knuckles and sometimes it feels really good if you can to pause as you're kind of straight back like this big breath and then continue a little bit further. Don't go all the way down and don't drop your strap. I'm going to invite you to come back up. Pause and breathe. And when you're ready, power in that core if you lost it. Again, give yourself more room on the strap as needed. And come on back. Ah, good. We're going to be coming back to the strap in a moment, but I want to give us a little break. Just set it to the side. And I want to share with you a stretch that's just wonderful for wrists um, but for us to do this we 
really need to be able to get into a deep bend for the most part. Very few people are going to have the flexibility to do this with the legs straight. So I'm going to come into a nice rag doll, but really deep with my basically my chest or belly on the thighs. And I'm going to lift one foot at a time and I'm placing my foot ben hand beneath my foot with the palm of my foot up to meet the sole. Okay. So I want to go as far back such that my big toe is now at the crease of my wrist. I see people stop short all the time, and kind of put it just in the palm. It's not going to be the same. You're going to miss out on a juicy part of this. So if you possibly can, and it doesn't hurt, get that hand all the way under your foot, then lift and get the other one under. Pause. And first, just notice what does it feel like to curl your big toe down into the pad of the thumb. I think it feels great. Breathe. <sighs> and then you get a little traction by pressing the hips towards the sky. And so I tend to release on the inhale. Exhale, press the hips towards the sky. And this is a often a part of monkey pose and how it's taught. It's just a great wrist stretch on its own. All right. And if you'd like to do the spinal extension, you just extend the head forward away from the tailbone. And release. Come slowly out. Come on up and roll out those beloved wrists. Ah, good. Let's give some love up also to the fingers. We often come into prayer hands as a wrist stretch. And then from there, <clears throat> one of my favorite things to do is to just bring the palms away from each other so that I'm getting a deep stretch through the fingers. This can also be done in reverse prayer, turning the fingers down. People often shrug when they're doing this. So I invite you first, get the shoulders anchored then draw those forearms into as much of a straight line as you can. They might be down here, that's fine. We're looking for a stretch, in fact, into this kind of belly or meat of the forearm as I think of it on the underside. And then we can once again stretch through the palms and fingers, which especially if you've been doing much gripping, this can feel marvelous by bringing the palms away. And then come on out and just give them a nice organic wiggle, or as I say, play piano badly. <laughs> I'm sure this is not how it's done. <laughs> All right. So we're going to grab the strap one more time, do another shoulder exercise. Um, again, I think of these as the kinds of sensations that you would get if someone was really massaging and working your body, especially in like a Thai yoga massage um, kind of format. So here we're going to again find a nice deep straddle. So take your feet good and wide and take your arms up into that starting position. Again, pushing through the fists, no wrist cuff. So make sure you've got a nice straight line from the elbow bone to the wrist to the middle knuckle. And then we're just gonna go a little side to side. And what's really key here is number one, that I'm in my core, I'm neutral. I'm not arched uh, like so. So I want to find again that kind of that low robot belly as we sometimes call it or the engagement that we get during compression, right? And that secondarily, I'm not trying to go too far. There is nowhere to arrive other than the good stretch, and you'll lose the good stretch if you go into survival, okay? So we're gonna take it nice and slow, root and reach, neck is liberated, tongue soft. And on your exhale, still pushing through the fists, go a little to one side. I usually look down at the floor or just find whatever feels easiest for your neck. Pause, root and reach some more. Big inhale. Exhale and see if you can go a little further over to that side. And then inhaling, still reaching, come back up. Inhaling, center. Exhaling over to the other side. Check that both arms are vigorously pushing and reaching. Pause here for a full breath. Inhaling, come on back. Good. We're going to do one more. Big inhale, center. Shoulder heads anchored, arms active. Exhale to the side. Hold for a full breath. And notice would it also feel good to rotate your chest just a little towards the sky. 
and come on up. So when I do that, I get an amazing stretch kind of into that upper rib cage. And one more the other way. Rooting, reaching, perhaps rotating the ribs a little open to the sky. And come on back. Good. Go ahead and fold. Bend the knees, fold into your straddle. Oh, and just this is a wonderfully therapeutic posture. Um, just letting the spine decompress. Um, I often say this is a great uh, kind of alternate to child's pose um, if you can't be on your knees. But also, this is a good one because you can use it anywhere, right? You can be standing in the middle of a, a patch of dirt and hold forward and just put your hands on your feet or something. So it gives some nice decompression for the spine. If you would like to add yoga mudra here, you would intertwine the hands up behind the back and press the fist towards the sky and then let them come up and over. You could also use a strap, same principle as before, which is that we want to give ourselves enough room on the strap to get integrity in the pose. And in this pose, it's getting those arms very straight as well, keeping them straight as we let those shoulder heads rotate and if it feels good, kind of pulse a little bit, bringing the fist towards the sky and then a little back over your body so that you're getting that movement around the shoulder blade. And when you decide to come up, you can either let the arms go to the floor or you can kind of push through the fists to bring the whole body up. Go ahead and set the strap aside. We are done with that for now. Oh, actually we will need, uh, I forgot. I've got one more exciting thing for you. Go get your strap. <laughs> you may not need it, but um, you might. So um, I'm just gonna leave it hanging around my neck here um, so I can kind of talk you through the, the version without it. So um, I promised you that we would do something similar standing to what we were doing laying down. And uh, this is a really fun one for getting hip opening and also practicing root and reach and core integrity. Um, again, you know, if we get greedy about performing a certain pose and we think, oh, legs straight, and we make legs straight the priority, we very well may come out of the, the kind of priority of the integrity of the core. So I'm gonna kind of focus on that today. Um, first, if you're able to, just reach your right knee up and bring it as tight to your chest, just like we did in release wind pose. Just like in release wind pose, I want that other leg completely activated. I'm pushing into the floor and rising up like so, okay? So this is really, really key that I'm not hunched over trying to make this happen. So again, if you needed to, you could use the strap on the knee, shoulder heads anchoring down. It's a bit of a balancing posture as well, as you can see, all right? So with either the strap or your hand, whatever you're working with, I'd like you to play with now bringing the left arm out to the side and you've either got your right hand on your knee or on the straps and just see what it would feel like to bring that right knee out to the side. Now again, I'm most interested in having my whole spine stacked so there's no collapse uh, in the standing knee or in the pelvis or the shoulders, rooting and reaching. And then once you're there, play with also bringing that arm overhead. And I'll just show you quick what it would look like from the other side, like so. Okay, so that's what we're looking to do. That's that right knee up and out, other arm reaching. Beautiful. Now, bring that knee back to center and see if you can switch it to cross over, it doesn't you don't have to go very far, you're just crossing it a little kind of past the center line, and then taking your other arm and reaching out and maybe even behind you. So very challenging, it's a, a challenging balancing posture, right? Um, anytime we're doing balancing poses and we move our point of vision, uh, we will make it harder. So it's a fun way to make it harder. All right, other side, let's bring that left knee up and in again, hooking the strap around the knee if you need to. Checking in with this standing leg, like right now my knee is bent. So I'm gonna check in with it and I'm gonna push the earth away. And you can see it just changes everything. 
Um, it makes me taller. It makes me straighter. This knee comes higher. And I can either bring that hand out or I can also play with it up and feel what that feels like. Then when I'm ready, I'm going to take that knee out to the side. And in this one, I also notice that sometimes, um, you know, it feels good to grab inside of the knee or outside, just depending on your body. But I also notice that sometimes people kind of lean to like get this knee further out. I really am wanting to maintain a body that mostly looks like I'm just standing, very powerfully standing. And it just happens that my knee is out to the side. So make sure that this hip is still pressing towards the center line. It's the same challenge that we have in tree pose. We don't want to cock that hip out. All right, and as you're ready, bring it back to center. And you can kind of cross that right hand onto the left knee. If it feels good, you can bring it a little across center. If it feels like too much of a pull, don't. Deep breath, and I'm gonna rotate that other arm out behind and look over my left shoulder. And come on back. Whew, good. Take those legs super wide and straddle. And let's do a little side to side. So when we're in straddle, reminder, we want our feet uh, parallel. We want the whole bed of the foot staying in contact with the earth. And your straddle might be up here, hands on hips. And that's a great place to, to move. It might be sliding down the thighs. Others might be hands coming to the floor. And so just noticing if that pose we just did really works the glutes and the hips. So, you know, you might be a little sore, but it's generally in places that we, we need to build our, our strength. And if you liked that and you want to take it the next step, join me later in the week. Um, because in the Thursday um, yoga flow class, we're going to actually do a, a kind of um, more intensified version of that. Um, also, we should have a strap handy for that. Um, I'm going to recommend a sip of water, take a little pause, and just notice what's happening in your heartbeat and where you're feeling your body having gotten work. Okay, so I promised you a little sun salutation, and so we're going to do that. Um, <clears throat> just a, a little quickie. And I say that one of the main things with sun salutation, of course, it's all the alignments and stuff, is that we're, we're building heat and fluidity, and you've already hopefully got a lot of that from what we've been doing. Um, but also that our greatest challenge is to move from breath. So to let the inhale tell you where to go, to let the exhale tell you where to go. <clears throat> and so I'm gonna ask you to please make that your priority. And so if you have to do it at a different pace or whatever than what I'm offering, go for it okay and um i earlier uh, in a previous practice had talked about this sal salutation often um, this version people have practiced a knee down um, but some people really prefer it and will teach it with being on your back foot in a lunge and that's what i'm going to be doing today okay so totally up to you you can go back to that knee down version if you'd like remember sun salutation has two sides or two halves and we have our lead leg so the lead leg uh, will be the right leg first and then the second round it'll be the left leg. The lead leg is always the first one to move. Um, so I will talk you through that. All right, when you are ready, please find your mountain. You're now at the front of the mat. Feet are parallel. Big toes pressing in, other toes spreading wide. And perhaps the arms are down in your jet airplane. Again, you can start from prayer or here, whatever you'd like. Find breath here. Slow deep abiding breath try to feel that strong root and reach that brings you into your neutral spine and on a long inhale root and rise up Exhaling, fold. Inhaling, extend halfway. Hands might be on the shins. Exhaling, step back, right leg only. Good. Pause for a nice long inhale here. 
and exhale, step back to your plank. Nice long inhale here. Exhaling Chaturanga, you might come to knees so that you can, in integrity, do that nice half push-up or low push-up. To the floor, inhale, Cobra. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Again, you might go via the knees. Inhaling, lead leg forward, right leg. Get that fullness of inhale, and then exhaling, forward fold. Nice compression. Inhaling, root and rise. Exhaling, resolve in prayer, or arms down. Take a breath and notice. Make breath the thing that leads you through space. On your inhale, root and rise up. Exhaling, fold. Inhaling, extend halfway. Exhaling, step back, left leg, lead leg only. Pause here for a long inhale, exploring your root and reach. Exhaling, step back to your plank pose. Pause also, nice long inhale. Exhaling, chaturanga. Lowering the chest before the hips, remember. Inhale, either cobra, hips on the floor, or you might come into your upward facing dog on the tops of the feet, the balls of the feet. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Inhaling, left leg, lead leg forward. Long inhale, root and reach. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, root and rise. Exhaling, prayer hands. Again, pause. Notice what's there. All right. I hope that felt great. Again, if you like that flow, um, but again, you're, you're needing more time with alignment or to find your breath, just take the time. Um, there's no reason you have to do sun salutation a certain way or at a certain pace. It just offers us fluidity and a lot of body strengthening, but we're not going to get those benefits unless we're doing it in a way that feels good to us, right? So you're going to be coming now to Kapalabhati breath with me, skull polishing breath, and <clears throat> you're welcome to do it seated. Uh, if you're seated, I really want your spine to be comfortably long. Uh, you're also welcome to do it standing. I'm going to be kind of showing you with my body standing initially so that you know what that looks like. And essentially, um, we are doing a long enough inhalation through the nose to get full breath and then a rapid expulsion through the nose. Um, I was taught uh, to imagine that you're trying to shoot a pea, like a garden pea, out your nose. Uh, towards the wall in front of you or towards the, the floor in front of you. So that's kind of the idea. So it's a big inhale, big belly, and then, and again. So if you notice that your belly is going out on the exhale, you want to change that, right? As we inhale, our belly should expand, and in order for that exhale to happen, the abdominal wall should be going ha, towards the spine. So if that's your point of difficulty, have your hands on your abdomen so that you've got a reference point and think inhale, belly into hands, exhale, belly away from hands. So if you would try that a few rounds, keep going, um, noticing if you get lightheaded, if you've got high blood pressure or um, anything in particular, you know, just recently had a, a surgery or something, um, this probably is not going to be uh, the practice that you want to do today. But um, otherwise, you know, just noticing what you're feeling. If your neck's getting tight, invite it to stay soft. And we'll do a few more. Keep going a couple more. And then on your long inhale, whether you're seated or standing, inhale, sweep the arms up. On your exhale, fold. Empty the breath and hold the breath out 
as you come upright, either seated or stand, holding the breath out. Notice the sensations that the breath block creates. And then when appropriate for you, inhale and hold in, internal breath block. And holding that breath block only as long as it feels great. Um, you know, some intensity, yeah, but we never want to struggle with it. The breath should always just feel um, like a massage, again, that you're, you're choosing and that you're welcoming. Um, so I'm offering today a longer practice. Um, I've got a wonderful piece of music that I'd like to share with you that's by some friends and yogis of ours. Um, that will take you into Shavasana if you've got the time right now. And um, if not, then I want to thank you for coming to the practice and um, encourage you to come back and do uh, Shavasana again. You could do it later tonight or whatever you'd like. Um, also encouraging you if you liked the Kapalabhati, or if in fact you didn't, <laughs> it was difficult and awkward, consider practicing it again. So in our practice later this week together, we'll be doing it again and we'll be doing more than one round. Um, but I wanted to at least introduce it to you and some of the things to be watching for. Please find your comfortable position, whatever that is. Maybe it's reclined. Uh, maybe you want to find a, a scarf or a blanket to cover yourself with. Um, it's nice for warmth, but it also helps create um, experience of introversion. Remember, you can be in any position. You could be doing a seated meditation um, if you'd prefer that today. So I'm going to offer up um, Om and the bowl um, again for any of you that are departing your practice now. And then uh, if anyone else, you can just let it settle into you as you are finding your deep and restful sleep, your yogic sleep. Inhaling slow, deep, and wide. Oh. Shanti, 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 Om. Peace, peace, peace. Namaste. I hope you had a great practice. I hope you can stay for a lovely Shavasana with this music, our offering, and that it takes you into a lovely, deep, and healing space.